What up, Pittsburgh Steelers fans? It is your good touchdown under blokes here, Matty P and Marky D. Marky D, we're recording this on our Monday for the Mad, Mad Monday show for the US. How are you doing on this fine Monday afternoon? I uh, just, just wanted to say, for the first, I think, four months doing podcasts, I didn't like you, but now I do, so it's fine. <laughs> that's no, that's... It's a joke. It's oh, see, you didn't I know, know. I know. Why. But imagine Kenny. At least Kenny <laughs> didn't feel like that when he heard it. Right? <laughs> Your eyes lit up. No, I did like you. I did like you. Now I like. I like you the whole time. Nah, but what? Okay. Know. What is your quick? I wanted to get you on the on the on the on the go, right? Yeah. What is your quick like reaction to that? I don't care. It's fine. It I think it's cool me. that Ben was honest with him. And could you, anyone be surprised? Like, is it that big a deal? Well, you you and I have talked about this before. If Ben wasn't a stealer, I probably wouldn't like him. Like, you know what I mean? Would you? Uh, I'm like, uh, yeah. 50, probably 50. not. I mean, I don't think he did the second allegation. I think the first one. I'm not talking about know, that. I'm just talking about. I know both like, intoxicated. No, but it factors into it, man. Like, I, I find it, I, it's a hard thing because, I mean, I've talked about it with different Steeler fans and I'm particularly international ones and, and. Yeah, it's a. Uh, but no, I don't know. I prob- probably. I just mean like probably his, like his ego. Probably like not. Just, probably not. But I yeah, would I'm like sorry. Kenny. And you know what? It validates the video that I put up yesterday about Kenny Pickett. So if you haven't checked that out, check that out. Like Ben said, down the stretch, he got excited by Kenny Pickett. Remember a few weeks yes. ago, we talked about it, and we were like, "I said to you, honestly, I've never been this excited about the Steel. I haven't been this excited about the Steelers in a long time." as much as I am with Kenny. Yeah. You know what was good, though? Like, in, in that setting, too, where Big Ben, he said it to his face and not behind the podcast. Yeah. You know what I mean? Exactly. I like that. Like, And also, I think he, he's been a little bit selfish, but at the same time, Big Ben has been there for 18 years, and the next minute, he he's no one cares anymore. It's all about Kenny Pickett. So you Correct. would feel some kind of like, oh, man. Like, Kenny's doing so Especially well. Especially because he thought he could still play. I mean, I don't yeah. know about that, though. And the like, O-line's better now. The team's, like, much, in a much better position. They Look at the, the weapons they have with uh, uh, Pickens and, and he said he wants to play with Muth more. Now you have, you have the running back a set there. So the team is in a better spot. I'm not saying that Big Ben would have won with them, but if he's looking going, okay, I would have been in that spot where Kenny is Man, now. I would have loved to have seen. I'm glad Ben said that Pickens, when he talked about who he'd throw it to, but, like, I would have loved to have seen Ben. Imagine Ben Roethlisberger prime with George Pickens. You think he's a, you think he's a bit jealous about that too? Because he brought, he also brought up Muth too. He didn't have enough time to play with Muth, yeah. and maybe he could have got one more with that like that team. I don't know, but but, I he, think but, it's but, okay. but to me he couldn't have because he hogged too much of the salary cap, right? Like yeah, but that, he's, but also he's, he's always made it about himself too. Big Ben's always made it about himself. We know that. Like we just know that as as watching him play. So I thought I thought the whole interview was interesting. Um, you know, that, that's the one point we're now focusing on is like he didn't want him to ball out, but he warmed up to him. Yeah, all the I think that's now, like, some people as well. Like, so yeah. before we end today's show, which we've got a kind of interesting topic for everyone. Anything else that you wanted to cover off just randomly about Steelers stuff? Um, you know what? In the news recently, I think the Steelers are still lo- located like third or fourth in the division to win that. I uh, sorry to come third, which is very odd. Um, there was one point I wanted to make too that the Steelers and Chiefs now share the same record for being ten years with a non-losing season. But can we can we see the twenty-year one? Just because yeah. now the Chiefs catch up to ten years, it's a big deal. When in, when in reality, well, didn't they draft Chiefs Alex won. Smith in twenty twelve? I have no idea. No, they traded for him in twenty twelve for San Francisco. Have you have you, have you seen that graphic right. where it where it says uh, 10, 10, in the last ten years, Chiefs and Steelers have zero losing seasons? Yeah, but in reality, the Steelers have in the last twenty years. Where's that graph? I'm just saying it's only important when another team catches up. Correct. It's like Super Bowls. It's like no one cared about six Super Bowls oh. until the Patriots got there. It's like, hang on, the Steelers are sitting there. We've had six. We we have we have to get. Are they going to get seven first? Because that would be the best. If they got seven first. Got, There's got, a few got... teams on five though. San Fran's on five, I think. Dallas is on five. Yeah, true. So. They- but I think the Steelers are going to win one before the Patriots do. You think so? You'd hope so. Well, that, that means Big Ben would be annoyed. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. It's been an interesting last, I think, last week or so because there's no more news now. So it is really like more more drama stuff. 
Yeah, anything else? yeah, and it's hard too because the team, like this time last year, we were doing a lot of comparisons to year before, and we still should do that through the off season. But it's also like so new. There's been such a player overhaul. Like that was the title of one of our shows in the last few, week or two, and it, it's just been that way. But you, speaking of that topic, you came up with the idea today yeah. um, for the show, so we'll crack first, into first, that first of the year. I think. <laughs> nah, I'm not <laughs> more than that. Um, basically. I'll decide what the when the title is when uh when I go and upload this to YouTube. But basically it's like which Steelers need to shape up or otherwise they'll be shipped out. Shipping. Um yeah. so you know, I mean there's different analogies around that, but you know, you know, basically get it together, get with the program or you're but you're on the hot seat, right? Um, so it might be good to bring up our good old classic depth chart. Um, I know you've got some strong opinions about this, so I'm honestly gonna throw this to you, oh, you know, you know what that comes to one comes to mind actually. Yeah, could I start off with one straight away? Which I yeah, go for it. You, but, it's your your show. I'm I'm keen to feed off it. Rudolph, I think Rudolph has to play to get that third. I don't I don't I don't think he's guaranteed third. I think he has to play. Yeah, depending on I haven't seen the terms of the contract yet. Has that fully been leaked? I know it's cheaper than what he was on last year. I saw though. it was like about a million dollars. I think it was about a million dollars though. So yeah. That's not, that's but, not some, but one could argue. Point. And so, if you're new to our show as well, the Bluers from a, a podcast we did about a week or two ago, where we're talking about guys that are likely on the practice squad as we narrowed it down to, to, to toward 53. Um, but Marky D, like, yeah, he's in a battle with Tanner Morgan here for sure, definitely around that third quarterback spot. Well, even maybe someone else that comes in, we don't know if they're going to add someone else during the season. I don't have no idea. So, I wouldn't say that Rudolph is going to be a sure thing at number three. I think Trubisky mm. would be a sure thing at number two. Um, but, I, you know, because they paid him the extension, that kind of stuff. But maybe he could be on the – would you say ship in or ship out? I don't forget what you said. Shape up or ship out? <laughs> shape up. Yeah, you might have to shape up. Maybe. Isn't that, isn't that from a song, Better Shape Up? Do, do, isn't that like from a – Grace. From the, the Grace? <laughs> No, I don't know. I think that they doc took that from the saying. I don't know. I, there uh, was a, there's another there's another analogy that I'm thinking of as well, another <laughs> version of it, but I I couldn't come to me. So yeah. So would you would you agree with that one? Would that maybe Rudolph has to play some good football to to certify number three yeah, spot? Yeah, I back that. I back that. Yeah, right. Um, you said you said to me out a few running backs, so that's probably the next logical. Well, spot. I've been seeing this idea around that McFarlane is like guaranteed number three spot. And nah, I I, I'm not on that train. I know that's what I'm saying. I'm I'm kind of thinking there's other blokes have a chance. Why he's on the ship out train, man? Yeah, I, I think so too. I think there's other blokes have a chance at court, uh, running back three than McFarlane. They, they, people are already penciling him in as number three just because it's McFarlane, the name. But the name doesn't hold too much weight anyway. So I'd rather give Tiger a shot or, or Graham a shot in camp. And if they play better, you sign those guys, guys up to number three. Yeah. But I've seen McFarlane. I've seen McFarlane in some articles I've been reading on the internet about that he's like he's he's penciled in already. Like that's it. But I don't know where that comes from. Like, how can you do that? These guys showing us nothing. He's played well, like they, six snaps or something. Maybe because they haven't shown anything with Teague or Graham. But I want to see a camp first before I before I do the. Uh, he's played more than forty six snaps, but he's I think he's had forty six rushing attempts or something. Um, yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Any other people on the running back? Uh, well, I guess in that same sense, well, Najee Harris and Warren are making it. They're just going to just perform. They should yeah. be there. But the same sense, I think with Teague or Alfonso Graham and whoever they, they might bring in someone else, I don't know, maybe after camp or whatever happens. Yep. But if they play some good football, a bit like how Warren did last year, then they might carve themselves a role for uh, uh, running back running back three. But what they should do, what they, what the Teague could be that, in the mix as well, man. Yeah. They have a good camp and then go to preseason. You play well in preseason, you get a spot. That's how normally that's how it worked for Warren. Warren was good in camp. He did well in the preseason and the earned the only spot. So and he can block like nothing else. Oh yeah. Oh man, he is just so fun to watch. Oh. Um all right. Any any other names that scream out on the offense before I go into a couple? Okay, let me look at I was thinking of oh um Anthony Miller. I think he Ah, uh, you on. took the name right off my tongue. Uh, yeah. Okay, my bad. Actually, you know That's what? Right. You know what? Uh, I'm going to say... No, 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 no. Miller. go into Miller. Go into Miller. It's fine. Well, because all the blokes they're bringing in now, I thought that Miller was going to be like number three or have a chance to be number three. But yeah. they brought in Robertson. He's going to be the vet guy. He was gonna, he's got to show out too. Yeah. But 
They brought him in for a reason. You have the two standouts and Pickens and Deontay, but Miller is now the odd guy looking out going, can I even make this team? Yeah, definitely. Because who's going to run back the kick returns? It might be Austin. It could be the other bloke. Uh, is it Boyd or someone that, um, I can't remember his name. Oh yeah, Bo- oh, Bird, Jordan Bird. Bird, Jordan Bird. Yeah, he might have a chance, but he's on. The, he's real far looking out. But Miller, he's had been injured what, last year, so he and he's Gunner's still on the roster for now. I mean, I think he, he would be, but he's not on this page. But you know, yeah. So maybe him and him and uh, Butler, like the, the last last position. Yeah, I think Boyton's got a better shot of making this than Miller does, to be honest, because of the special teams. Yeah, true. But you know what? You know what I'd also do with the, with the receivers? I'd probably say, I would say that Austin's going to make it. But if I was a coach, I'd make him fear that he's not. Yeah, I agree. I no, no, I agree with you. I agree with you. Like he, we haven't seen him. We haven't seen him play. So you make him go. Okay, you got to go. You got to earn that spot. Not just because you're fast and super quick. You got to earn that spot. All right, I'm going to go two guys to close out the offense. Um, Spencer Anderson. I think he's going to have to earn his spot. Right, like what you've talked about, like the seventh round draft pick. I'm hopefully can. I think he could be sneaky. Good. You're pretty high on him, aren't you? I am. Um, I'm gonna do a video on him in the next week or two. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm high on Anderson. Um, particularly at center. Um, so so there's a guy. Um, Dotson better want to shape up as well because I think you could move him. I don't think they want to, but they could, particularly with Nate Herbig in there. Green is the interesting one. Like a lot of Steeler fans hate Kendrick Green. Like, obviously, I, I predicted, oh, I said he was a Steelers spit the d- day before the draft, and then they went and got him um, a couple of years back. It was interesting. The draft dudes did a podcast on the Steelers, and neither of them are fans of the Steelers. They support the Bills and the Dolphins, um, and they don't really talk about Steelers that much. But they even talked about Green, about like how he started too early, similar narrative that we talked about on a show recently. Mm-hmm. And then, but he, at the end of the day, he did have playing experience right over the last couple of years and it got me thinking like we all put him in the doghouse but if Kendrick Green was to sit on our practice squad or let's say we weren't ever assigned Nate Herbig um, or you did move Dotson he isn't the worst guy to have as your third depth offensive lineman I mean the guy did start his rookie year you know the guy you know I think that the whole guard the center thing is an issue I've, I've said for a long time they should have just had him there as the backup center and learn how to snap the football for two seasons. And then who knows what he could have been. Um, I, I I do think he's going to have to, sh- he's going to have to shape up tremendously to make this roster. I do think he probably ends up getting cut. Um, but if you can, if he can pass waivers and you can get him on the practice squad, I think that's going to look super for this offensive line. Uh, I think it's just funny listening to outsiders talk about his experience and sometimes the Steeler fans we just because we, we know him and it's like oh no you hate him or he didn't do well enough but actually compared well, we to what some of the other little, league have bit, at their depth as like the third yeah. offensive lineman he's actually pretty good okay there's one there's one video out there of him getting turned around like we only have limited knowledge Dan I feel Moore, like there's videos fair. of Dan Moore getting turned around yeah like I don't I don't hate Green I just think that He's on the outside looking in. Like, I think he's going to be depth yeah, or he but they, could, he fits the mold of, you know, shape up or ship out. And he was put into that center position really far straight away. So, Correct. you know, like, if you get him in this draft now, you're fine. But, yeah, I think we put us – we the still a nation. Some of us just jump on things straight away and we never let go. Some that hate Rudolph forever. Some will hate Correct. Green forever. Um, I can't stand Claypool and he's with the Bears. So, I, you know, I, I play the same game. Right, that's just what we do. Some of us hate Marcus Allen, you know. <laughs> well, you come back. I don't know. <laughs> no, no comeback from that. All right. Well, let's move on to the defensive side. Um, yeah. Ooh. Can I start one quick? Like yeah, real quick. Go. Yeah. Your your mate Roche. I think he's got to have a good camp to to, yeah. to have a, to have a spot. Otherwise, I don't think he's gonna have a spot. Yeah, like, that's a good that's a good one. Um, I think. Two names that scream to me when you look at this list very quickly are um I'm keen to see what the comments say when they when they watch this video on replay as well. Uh I look at Montradis Adams and Tanner Muse. They're two names that stick out for me. You don't think they're gonna let the gonna sign in because of the teams, or you think that's more or less like um which one, Adams or Muse? Uh Muse, Muse. If they sign Muse, um then Killer Brew could be on the chopping block. You just need that one big guy yeah. to make all the tackles. Because Tanamus is like a couple of pounds heavier than Killer Brew. I mean, Louder Milk's another name on this roster. Louder Milk could find himself on the practice squad this year. 
he might not be a starter for the Steelers when you look at what they've done in the interior. Well, when you stay there, right? So they brought in Watts, brought in for Hoko, which I'm keen to see them play too, right? Yeah. Like maybe the whole position is going to be like competition central. Because... Oh, 100%. 100%. Because you although uh, I still think Ben, I mean, Benton's the best guy on that list, though. Like, Benton's yeah, but he's the, the he's the rookie coming in, you're gonna give him a chance, right? But the other yeah. blokes, they're like, okay, there's only what say maybe three spots there, maybe two. You got four blokes. Well, you got you got four we've got listed at DE, right? Um, the defensive end. So the Steelers usually take seven or eight, right? So I would say they're gonna take seven because they're probably gonna need to keep Muse or they're gonna bring in another linebacker. Um, I would argue. I think they're going to go Loud and Milk practice squad and then Adams and Fahoko are fighting for a spot. Especially because Adams, like, you can cut him. Even though he's, like, a dead cap hit, I think you save, like, $2 million or something if you cut Adams. So it makes sense. What's, what's he, he's been the Steelers for two years, right? I think, yeah. Is that right? But the first year, the first of those two years, he came in halfway through the season. That's right. Yeah. Well, it's good that now they've addressed that position, really, with Benton. The more, the Some more, people the... are really high on Fahoko. Um, I know one of our listeners is, I'm trying to remember who it is in the live chat, so big on Fahoko. Um, it's because he can do the Haka. Fahoko. Have you seen yeah. you seen do the Haka? Yeah, man. It's fantastic. Um, so. Yeah, all right. So you're on the outside linebacker. You covered Quincy Roche. You need to be camped. Particularly Herbig's probably got the inside spot there. We talked about inside linebacker, middle linebacker. I feel like we've ripped through this show. Of this show, it's quite <laughs> funny. Like, we just say, yeah, um, <laughs> goodbye. This will be a quick one. That's all right. That means Take you can start yesterday's show. One. You can go back and listen again. But, um, obviously, also, with there's more guys on the list than this, this was the likely 53, so it makes sense. What about cornerback? Anyone at cornerback? So, I was going to go next. There's uh, the Sullivan bloke, I think, is is I think for Steel and Asian has to show up. Not, not, See, for the I coach, think he's yeah. ahead of James Pierre, yeah, but Steel and Asian says he's not a slot. He says that he can't play. He literally was brought in for the slot. Like, <laughs> mate, like, that's what I've been reading. I've been reading on the news recently. He can't all right. play. All right. Let me let me pull up. I'll, I'll tell you how where he's lined up. Um, I think PF are the only ones that do slot corners. You know why it is though? Because he's not a big name. That's why I'm saying like we gotta wait till they till they come to camp. He's not a big name. And then we start making moves in camp and preseason, then we'd be like, oh, that Sullivan guy's pretty good. What's his first name again? Shandon? Shandon? Sh- Shandon, I think. Yeah, Shannon Sullivan. And played with um Peterson uh last year. So they played right. like they played together. All right. So they people question his slot, right? Now I don't know. I haven't looked at this, but I know that he does play in the slot. Um, particularly when he runs a four point six forty yard time. All right, everyone, here we go. Slot corner, number of snaps. Week one last year, 45 out of 55. Week two last year, 59 out of 71. Week three, 55 out of 62. Week four, 43 out of 52. Week five, 35 out of 41. Week six, 53 out of 60. Week eight, they had the buy in week seven. Week eight, 64 out of 78. Week nine, 42 out of 52. Week 10, 64 out of 73. Week 11, 35 out of 38. Week 12, 49 out of 55. Week 13, 68 out of 74. Week 14, 38 out of 52. Week 15, 63 out of 71. Week 16, 58 out of 70. Week 17, 34 out of 42. Um, And week 18, 25 out of 28. And the wild card, 56 out of 64. Tell me he's not a slot corner when he played you know 886 snaps in the slot out of his <laughs> 1,038 snaps. That's like over 80%. You know what I just learned? Never argue with Maddie. Never. <laughs> Never. You'll bring up a sheet and be like, you said this, no, no, no. That's, that's what I've been hearing, man. I've been reading and hearing that. So <laughs> That's the, that's the title. Like, <laughs> Shannon Sullivan is a slot corner. <laughs> Well, I, I did read on, uh, I think it was two publications. I won't say their names, but I read on two yeah, publications. Yeah, say them. Say them. I won't call them out. Well, I'm keeping them myself. I'll no, I'll call, them, I'll call them out. You tell <laughs> me and I'll, go and, I'll, and I'll smash them. Go. Go. No, I can't. I can't. Go. Tell me. Tell I can't. me. Tell me. All right. Well, hang on. Let me see. Um, tell me. One was, I think, was it St- Stiller? Stiller Nation or something? Like S-T-I-L-L-E-R? Okay. Let me see. Also, the year before, he had 674 in the slot out of 881. Again, tell me this guy's not a slot corner. 
Yeah, I think they released a uh, 53 man roster. Hang on. Love how we're doing work on the fly. In 2020, uh, he played over two thirds of the snaps in the slot before he was a defined slot right, wide receiver. I oh, don't wide receiver, slot corner, sorry. So, what did you have? So you had, what did you have? 80%? Over eighty percent. I mean, I'd have to do the quick calculation. Oh, here it is. You want me to read? Eight 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 six divided All by right. ten thirty so... eight. 85 percent. Eighty five percent in the slot last year. Uh, I think it was. Yeah, still, still curtain dot com said it. Oh well, they're stupid. <laughs> Who's the second one? I probably just made that up. Uh, but you, we, we can call them stupid as, uh, twice. There was talking about cutting players. Like, it was something like that. This wasn't behind the steel curtain. No, 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 no. They wanted no, to... No, steel curtain. Steel curtain. Yeah, they wanted to cut players. Ah, and that was brought up. Stupids. Uh, and they said that he wasn't... They, that he said... They said that was, he wasn't... Um, wasn't going to make the roster because he, cause he's sl in slot. Something like that. Anyway, well, don't read that website, anyone. That website's a load of. Well, that's what I, that's what I was going off. That website is a load of. It's awful. It's awful. Yes, yeah, three candidates uh, to be cut during the summer. Yeah, they they don't know what they're talking about. It's James Pierre over him every day of the week. What about uh? What about the safeties? Who you got at safety? Give me one player at safety that you think's on the. Because I, I I think I know who you're going to say here too. <sighs> oh, Trey Norwood. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. I wasn't going to say that until he said that because it reminded me to say it, but. Uh, <laughs> Talk about leading the witness. <laughs> but uh, Trey Norwood, mate, one of my favorites, round seven guy. Love round seven guys. Um, He's got to do something. And I feel like he's not big enough. He's just not, from the guys they're bringing in, and if, even on, I don't know, I just feel like he's just not uh, an, an impactful player mm. that I saw in the, in the week one versus the Bills. And then from then it went nowhere. Yeah. Uh, I just don't. I don't think he fits the mold anymore for the Steelers. I don't think so. I don't think so either. And I also think that like he hasn't developed right. And and they no, no, the nothing, point. nothing. I would say what hurt him is them bringing in Kazi because Kazi took some of the role that he kind of played the year before. Um, but they went out and re-signed Kazi again. So I think mean, that's a problem. I think Riley they'll keep on the practice squad if they can. He he helped them in some tight spots last year. Um, I I see him as a cornerback you know, set free safety or deep safety flex. Um, but yeah, I think they're, they're the two guys clearly on the chopping block. As I've said too, Killebrew could be in for a, could be in for, a, you know, a tough time holding down his special team spot, depending on what happens with Tanner Muse as well. Um, I think that the next big one probably, because we know that Christian Kunz is going to stay there. It's probably the punter sure. battle, man. It's the Aussie. What's the Aussie guy's name again? Um, the Aussie guy, then there's there's Braden Man from the Jets. He signed though. I don't, I don't think the Aussie guy signed. I think he was he's only just a, a camp. He's just a camp tryout, right? Yeah, I think the Brendan Brendan Man's the only one he's signed. I think. Yeah, from memory. I I reckon Man's got the running over Harvin. Well, he's got he's got to do something. You know, I don't, I think Harvin's been. You a talk about off. you know. A you off. talk about you talk about like doing stuff over the last few years. Um. What is what has really Harvin really shown that's been outstanding or excellent in in that position? Yeah, you know, Sorry, no, I heard, is he I, laughing coming up with funny ideas about? No, I, I heard. How I heard Christian Kunz is going to run a punt off. <laughs> I heard your joke, and I'm just trying to like this, you know. Um, but that's but I don't know. The punting is so, and I know it's I know you I know you need it for the the team. And like, if you put them in the, the 20, it's fine. It's great to see. But do you really need an excellent punter to go win games? Yes. You, you do? If you're going to play short fields, I do. I think that's, I think some teams, particularly teams in colder weather, I think it's really important to get like field. What, what, what did we see last year? Was it last year where Presley Harvin got the one, the ball to the one? Is that right? Mm, that was an awesome yeah. kick. You see those I don't hate Presley Harvin. I just, I don't, no, think, I, I don't think he's. Like, I don't think he's, like, the, the guy for the next decade, you know, like, or even five years. All right, we've got about five minutes left in the show. I want you to tell me one or two names that you think it could be surprise cuts that we, if anyone, there might not be anyone, that we haven't already covered off. Uh, let me see. Surprise cuts, like dead set Gonskis. 
Um, or even you can, I'll give you trades. They can be moved as well. Gentry. Yeah, you took again. Oh, that's right. That's <laughs> and another one, another one would be holy dooly. Uh, who else would they cut? I mean, that Manny Jones guy, we you know, we we automatically penciled him in. He might not be like he might not be there. Um, they might keep the Hoko, they might keep four of the list on the DT and then move um Jones because Benton can play out. Oh, you know what? I'd be surprised if they cut Killerbury, to be honest. Ah, uh, see, I reckon he's much more on the chopping block. Maybe, so you, maybe it's not, not a not a big surprise then, because you got to have one. Do you know what mine is? Like, is that... what if Mark Robinson has regressed over the off season? I don't, I don't think this will be the case. I don't hope that this is the case. I'm just being a bit realistic. Put him back at running back. <laughs> 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 I'm still trying to find this article, by the way. I wanted, I wanted to see what they quote. They quoted because it's, it's um, they maybe call them out. So Austin just, could be. I reckon it could though. Austin could be the shock one, like what you said. Let's say they they the Steelers coaches basically make it out to him like he's going to get cut. Let's say he loses all confidence. He hasn't recovered as much as he thinks. Yeah. They, you know, they they think he has, or that he thinks he has, and it just doesn't happen for him. Maybe he doesn't see a lot of ball in the preseason. And that'd be good too. If the Steelers just go, don't go off his name base, but go off like his actual productivity yeah, and yeah. they go you know what you're not cutting it and see you later mate goodbye or they might hope he makes the practice squad i've been mean, i don't think you would i think someone else would pick him up but um yeah it's kind of interesting actually um anything else before we close out this week's mad monday we try and keep it light for you guys no, on monday just, just trying to find this article that i quoted and i can't actually quote the quote <laughs> you can't quote the quote sorry <laughs> But I know they said that. I know they talked about Jen and Sullivan in the slot. And there was like a whole, like a nice bit saying, well, this guy can't do this because I'm ram, ram, ram. And I was like, well, that was what it was from, right? Oh, but it's a live pre recorded show. So um, I can't find it. I just can't. It was something to do with um, the, the Steelers 53 or surprise, like surprise cats, you know, surprise cats. Uh, and he was part of that. But I was like, why would you cut him when they brought him in for a reason to be to be that slot corner? And now I can't now I can't find it. So that's good television. Um, other than that, no, I'm excited for OTAs. I'm excited. Can you find it? Maybe, I'm trying maybe. to look for it, but they're all talking about him being oh. cut. I love that people have asked in Google when you type in Shannon Sullivan, it's like, is he any good? <laughs> <laughs> and he's the question. He doesn't have great quickness, but he isn't going to be a playmate, and he isn't going to be a playmaker. He's a smart and reliable Damn. option, nickel or dime, who can play several roles in those defenses. That's according to behind the steel curtain. There you go. Our mates. Um, Our mates. It's, you know what, though? Even, even Big Ben and Kenny said, they talk about the small hands. They talk about, you know, the media talks about the, the, the players, this and this and this. And in, in near the end of the podcast, they said, we don't care. They don't know what they want. They're, they're, they're just beat writers coming up with stuff, you know? 100%. I mean, um, like our good mate, Dale Wally, told me that Pierre was guaranteed to get an RFA tender at $2, well, two million and he didn't get it. Well, And I still am waiting on my apology. Didn't we forget about Didn't we forget about that? Or didn't you forget about that? Or you didn't? Yeah, right? I didn't. Um, I had the receipt. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He guaranteed me with full assurity. A full assurity. And he's a bloke that walks in the locker room. Does he not? Yep, he didn't even know what an RFA tendered the contractual terms <laughs> meant. He's like, just because he's an RFA, that means that he's on contract. I'm like, no, it doesn't. Literally, the league definition of a contract. If you're an RFA, you are not on contract. Unless Jeez. you're tendered. Jeez Louise. Do you think do you think these blokes actually like would they check out a podcast and like us? Maybe not, because we, we seem to be calling out a lot of people. But um, mm. I, I I call out my the the, the viewers. I also like people. who's the who's the mob that you hate. The sh- the oh, the chat forms. sports, mate. Chat sports. The chat sports. I put out a podcast about Kenny Pickett being <laughs> underrated and how people should give him more respect. And four hours later, they put one out. Come on, mate. They're, they're, they're checking in on his stuff. I'm not saying that people can't talk about Kenny Pickett on the internet. I'm just saying, like, really? You know, that's uh, the, and the especially main because you said they're fake. They're fake. They're not even stealing. Well, they are. They're just all about money. The main bloke's a Raiders fan. I found that out from my sources through Adam Schefter. Um, no, nah, I, I found it that they, they, they're, they're basically, sources. yeah, my, <laughs> yeah, Henry my, uh, toes. <laughs> <laughs> I 
All right, answer this question because I'm, I'm, I think I found it. What yeah. I, I asked Big Ben a question. Oh, am I still there? I'm still in. I I asked yeah. Big Ben a question, right? I wanted to ask Kenny. Um, what would happen? Would you rather fight two kangaroos or a Debo Harrison tired player after the pick six in, in Super Bowl 43? Straight after the pick six? Straight after the pick six. P- uh, Debo rather? every time. I'm not taking on two kangaroos, man. I'll take on Debo when he needs an oxygen <laughs> mask, 100%. I don't want to take on a stealer, but like, come on, man. Like, that's that's not even a choice. All right, I think I found it. I think I found it. Okay. So they have uh, steelcurtain.com, whoever those blokes are, written by written by Andrew Fals. Uh, Andrew False. No, I'm just joking. I'm joking, mate. Um, he's got Patrick Peterson, Levi Wallace, Joey Porter, Duke Dawson, J- uh, James Pierre, Corey Trice making the team. He's got he's got he's got Duke Dawson playing before Shandon Sullivan. Is he yes, just- yes, yes. So now he does go down to say, I opt in to let Duke Dawson as my slot cornerback while Shannon Sullivan sees more playing time. He has been rough as a player. I'll take the devil I don't know right now and hope someone shows up in camp. So uh, I don't know. About that. <laughs> so he's going to take the guy that doesn't know how to play slot compared to your stats that said he played 80%. All right. That was 85 okay. percent last year. 85% right. Last year. I'm glad I found that because that's what I was, that was on. I was quoting the quote on that. So that's shout out to uh shout out to what's his name? Andrew Faus from steelcurtain.com. Faus or Force? Fouts, F-A-C-E, Fouts. So he's cutting. He's cutting Shannon Sullivan. So he's Wait, letting... F-A-C-E? Yeah, or F-A-L-C-E, my bad. Oh. Yeah, false. Uh, <laughs> it's false. I, it's false. Yeah, he says he, says, he, says he expects... Uh, Peterson <laughs> Andrew, to well, your take is false. <laughs> <laughs> but, but that's what I'm saying, so I don't know. I don't, yeah, I don't think, I don't I don't think it's going to happen. I think, I think he's there for a reason. You brought him into big play slot, and then your stats back it up. Well, not your That's stats, it, but the stats on the internet. <laughs> My stats. <Yeah>. My stats. <laughs> we should start a new, new, new Oh, uh, man, website. I'm kind of glad stats. I got that. If you guys made it this far, make sure you create two or three accounts and sub three times, because I'm glad I got that out of the way, because that would have bugged me like forever if I didn't find the information. I'm glad. <laughs> All right, Marky D, a quick fire mad Monday for the listeners. Uh, enjoy your Mondays, guys. Enjoy your weeks. More content to come on Steelers Touchdown Under. Obviously, we'll be back later on in the week with the Touchdown Under Boys show. Um, we might have a few little different surprises throughout the week as well. Uh, but as always, Marky D. Yeah, we're going to have Kenny Pickett coming on. Go Steelers. Here we go. Go Steelers.